This area was open land, it was owned by the church, um, by the Bishop of Stepney that actually owned a large, a huge amount of London. Um, but it wasn't particularly attractive open land, some of it was grazing land, but a lot of it had been used for um, gravel pits and brick pits. But um, they persuaded the church to sell it. But interestingly, the, the best way at the time to make sure that it stayed public land was to actually make it crown land. So this is, I think, probably still owned by the Queen. And in fact, this housing, we can just see the end of. There's a strip of housing down this side of the park, which is still Crown Estate housing. Um, so it's predominantly uh, rented to people on lower rents and, you know, some like social housing, but bizarrely, the Queen is their landlord. Um, and which is kind of interesting because I, I don't know very much about that, but obviously there wasn't the legal mechanism to set up a public trust or anything like that at the time. So it was the best way just to make it, keep it safe in the public area, which it has done. It's a huge part. And I think probably if it had been no, owned by local authorities, they would have chopped off bits for housing. And I like this park because it's divided into lots and lots of, it's a, it's a well-maintained park. It's got lots and lots of different zones in it. So. For me, the main problem is that once once they start building on it, then we start losing the argument for keeping it as green space because it, each time that it's like, we're only taking away a little bit and London really needs houses and then we're only taking away another little bit and another little bit, another little bit and then suddenly in 50 years' time, we'll, you know, we'll have, it, it'll just be continuous from uh, you know, Hackney through to Newham. But people need open space. I think, you know, if you live in a city, you need open spaces to... Or the only, you know, the way that they have made the argument for building in such density is that there are green spaces to go to. So it seems, it seems wrong to build those high density and then a bit later take away the green spaces. Because even, so even though I'm predominantly very grumpy about the Olympics, I'll come down to Vicky Park with my family to watch the big screens because it feels a human scale. It feels inclusive but you know it feels like you know it's the kind of place we would come anyway so it feels right whereas it, you know the development that's happening there is all very very you know highly managed concrete and clipped grass and I would say it's the developers Olympics that uh, the main people who are going to benefit are developers from um, a whole swathe of area in the immediate Olympic zone but actually much wider where land values have gone up hugely over, well, even though the trend was upwards anyway it's massively accelerating but the main thing I think that the Olympics did was that the state was able to do land assembly was able to buy up the land from lots and lots of small owners and then carve it up into packages and hand it over to developers to build fairly shoddy housing that's going to be sold for a lot of money.